Alright, in this tutorial video we're going to edit the template matching results that we got from the last time. And you'll see two new directories, a cache directory which has the tomograms emclarity reconstructed in order to do the template matching, and also this folder that's prefixed with conmap, and what that stands for is cumulative convolution map, which is a tool that we use to edit, and internally it's how emclarity builds up the cross-correlation peaks when it does the template search. So we're going to change directories into that conf map and then list our contents and we're going to open up a couple different image files to help us decide how to, we want to edit. So firstly, and you don't always need to do this particularly when you become more familiar with your sample, uh, we're going to open up the bin 10 tomogram back from our bin 10 directory. This is tilt1 bin 10.rec and that's just to give us a reference so we can relate what the images we're seeing here to our convolution map are. Um, so a handful of files were generated, so everything for tilt1 tomogram2 is what we're going to be looking at. So we've got the cumulative convolution map, and then also the model file which stores the XYZ coordinates for the origins of each subtomogram that has been, has been found. The position and CSV file are basically the same thing, and emclarity will use that later to when it sets up the binary file that keeps track of all the geometry. Uh, the only other file that you might edit later is if you decide to totally ignore a tomogram rather than deleting some of it if you want to kick it out of consideration. The way you do that is before we initialize the uh, subtomo meta file, we just delete this path file. And that's all you have to do. So in iMod, we open up the convolution map and then you can just put the model file name after it. And then we're also going to strike the V key, which will open up a 3D model corresponding to the same points that are lit up over here. And you see immediately in the model it's pretty clear that we have our layer of ribosomes near the surface, our secondary layer here, and we have two other kind of interesting blobs so to speak where we have this strong blob down here which if we look through our tomogram using the page down again you see is this large piece of junk. And then also over on the left where we had our carbon edge you can see that's lit up pretty brightly in the convolution map and that also corresponds to some false positives that we found over here. Uh, although we don't have membranes in the sample, membranes behave in the same way because they're a uniform, rather strongly electron scattering uh, density so they tend to get picked up as false positives as well. And that's why we wanted to keep our number we picked 400 which is more ribosomes than we have that way we don't miss true signal. Now, if we take over here in the iMod menu, the slider bars, we can raise the threshold for white and black a bit. And one thing that does show you is the actual absolute value here of the cross-correlation hits is really high for particular positions. So for the ribosomes, it's a little more diffuse. There's a lot of similar looking features and that's because it's so globular. Um, but I think that's all we need to know about that. A uh, few other things that you can change just to make the editing a little easier. If after selecting the model window, you select Shift O, it gives you the object dialog so you can change things about this object. The only things I tend to switch, I change the line width, I make it just a little bit thicker so it's easier to see here. And you can change the color if you want in the line color. Um, that's all I'm going to change here. And if you wanted to change anything in the model window, if you hit Shift and V, in particular you can change the background color if you wanted to make it a little easier on your eyes. Um, some colors of blue and orange make a decent combo. But we're going to leave it as black and green, just the default for now, because we're not going to spend too much time editing. Okay, another thing you can do is change the sphere size, which will make these guys a little bigger. Let's actually do that real quick. So again, hitting Shift O going to the points menu and we'll change the sphere size which makes our spheres a little bit bigger over here too but you can see then let's bring this line width back down a couple it basically puts a circle around your point but you can see the cross correlation peak a little bit easier and if you're trying to decide between two peaks that happen to be close to each other which one's better that can make it a little bit easier to make an informed decision okay so that's the setup now on to editing the model so there's a couple different ways we can do this. In the overlay with the convolution map, we can come in and for features that are like membranes or whatever, if you use 
in model view. So again, you can toggle that with the M key or over on the iMod window. In model view, if you select a given point, you see it moved there and that it's just going to the slice in Z that that piece is centered on. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is being terrible. And in order to delete these, since each one represents an individual contour and not necessarily just a point, you need to hit Shift and D. And then that'll delete that contour from consideration. If you've deleted a contour you don't mean to, Control-Z will undo it. So you can just right click on points that you decide you don't want, which here this carbon edge obviously we don't want, and we're going to delete it. Now doing this in the convolution map is a bit slower and what it's particularly good for is when you have finer grain decisions to make, like is this a true hit or is it not? And we see if we zoom in on it a little bit that that looks like it really is a true cross correlation peak. So even though we picked up some sort of this uh, amorphous carbon, it's still, the threshold probably would have been enough to avoid it. You see that that's a much stronger, brighter peak right here centered on this guy. Um, yeah, that's that. So that's one way to edit it is just by selecting the contours here. And you see our junk also lit up pretty clearly, so we could go and, and delete some points over here. But there's a much faster way to go through and edit that, and that's in this 3D window, which I'm going to expand a bit. So to rotate this, oh, so this is something that happens quite a bit. For some reason, it may not happen on your system, but I'm running, I haven't updated past uh, Ubuntu's 15 yet. So if you turn off the ver vertex perfect, <laughs> Jesus, the vertex buffers, hitting Control Shift and V, it's a little lower quality image, but then it gets rid of that weird streakiness. So using the middle mouse button, we can rotate, and you can raise the quality of the spheres so they show up a little bit smoother, but this is fine for me. Um, and let's start, I guess, with this blob. So we can see that the ribosomes do stay in a pretty nice layer. And what I'm going to do is orient it so you can scroll by in and out by using the middle mouse key as well and translate in X, Y, and Z using the um, left mouse key. So one sort of caveat with how you select these, there's always a contour that is pre-selected and there's no real good way of knowing which contour that is. So you can't just start deleting things. You always want to click once with the right mouse button and then from there you can hold control dragging the mouse button over multiple points and you see over in our convolution map window, it's also highlighting the points you've selected. So it's kind of good to keep an eye on those, make sure you aren't inadvertently selecting points that are deeper in your field of view uh, that you don't intend to. So I've selected a bunch of points, and if you select more than five contours at once, I might well ask you once, do you want to delete all these? Just say yes, always. And then we're going to go through and we're just going to get rid of everything, basically swiping over these guys. Because the junk happens to lay in the plane, this is pretty easy. Now, this guy, you want to confirm, it does look like it's still junk, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, but for the finer editing, I'll probably go back to the other window to do that. So we've gotten rid of most of those junk hits very quickly. You see, we've already deleted 80 contours. So it's much faster than selecting it point by point. Let me do a similar thing over here. We know that the carbon was along the left edge. And I'm going to pick just a few points at first and look over at this left window as it changes and make sure to sort of define a plane. And what I'll do, and this is a pretty good way to do it with membranes too, is rather than go necessarily outside in, sort of define a boundary with the ones you're confident in. And once you delete those, then it's a lot faster just to come in and get rid of all those guys. Now leaving a few false positives is fine. We can get rid of those later when we deal with classification. But with an, as with anything else, if you put junk in, you're going to get junk out. So you do want to take the time, and this can get a little bit tedious if you have 100 tomograms, but it's going to save you a lot of time where you may invest, you know, two to four hours on a couple hundred to or on 100 tomograms of your own time. That's going to save you a ton of computational time later. Okay, so this model looks pretty clean. I'm going to take one more look through the cumulative convolution map. And 
it looks like we did get rid of all that junk. You can see the bright hits over here on the right. Um, I'm going to say that these couple points here are probably still junk too. You see how this has this diffuse density? And same here. So I'm just going to right click on those and shift D to delete. I'm going to get rid of these guys too. So as much as we want to keep as much real data as possible, it is also, in my opinion, uh, better to lose a few potential good hits than to keep a real strong false density in there. So we've edited the model, we're down to about 290, which is closer to what we would expect. Um, the full data set, all full tilt series, four tilt series should have around 3200. So on average per half tomogram, then you're gonna have somewhere between three and 400. They're a little bit inconsistent in the total number of ribosomes that are included. But that is it for the model editing. So just to recap there, a cache directory was created back in your main working folder with the tomogram reconstructed in it. And we changed into this convolution map folder, which whoop, we'll edit later. In that folder, we had a handful of files, the cumulative convolution map, which has all the peaks from the cross-correlation search, which we can use to assess the quality of our hits. And additionally, a model file that we can open on top of that by passing both arguments to IMOD at the same time. We also opened up our bin 10 tomogram just as a reference. You don't need to do that if you're familiar with your sample. In order to edit our model file, we changed first the line width and sphere size to make the lines pop up a little bit better in this view by selecting Shift and O to open up the object menu. And you can also edit the dialog or edit the background using Shift V for the background dialog. We ran into a funny issue where we needed to turn off the vertex buffers with Control Shift V. And then in order to delete each of these individual contours, you can select them with the right mouse button selecting Shift D, or if you didn't mean to, Control Z will undo it. And importantly, in 3D you can do this editing to select multiple contours. You first select one by right clicking, and then press and hold the Control key, and then you can drag your mouse over multiple at the same time, selecting many contours at once. Once you've done all this, you just close the iMod dialog, and of course you want to save the model. This time we don't need to name it, it'll just save a backup copy. So you see this tilt one, two, bin six mod with the tilde, that's the backup. And then this is our new model file. So when you've gone the whole way through, you might create a directory that's just original mods or something and move all these backup files, or you can just leave them there as backed up as well fine too. Um, I shouldn't have saved these images, I'm not sure how that happened. I must have hit control S or something. But in any case, that is editing. I hope that was useful. And if you have any questions, please post them. Thanks.